Welcome to Sailing Sertia. I'm Tegan. My parents sold our house, sold their business, and bought a 38-foot island spirit catamaran with the goal to travel the world. Only problem is, it needed a complete refit. This is Colbin, my husband. Corin, my mum. Denver, my brother. And Robin, my dad. Together, we make up Sailing Sertia. After checking in to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we set out from Union Island and headed across to Tobago Keys. This has been a bucket list destination for quite some time. We have always been fascinated with the incredible blue water, reef, and being able to swim with the elusive turtles we've been trying to catch a glimpse of since arriving in the Caribbean Sea. We always thought people's videos of Tobago Keys were obviously very over-edited because of the colours. They were way too bright and the water was way too blue. Well, as we sailed towards Tobago Keys, the colours started to change. It had us all hanging over the side of Saoirse, catching a glimpse of the suddenly turquoise water. Little did we know what we were in for when we dropped anchor and had a look around at this incredible island paradise. The water was crystal clear and an unbelievable turquoise that didn't look real. I kept trying to take my sunglasses off in the effort to try and see what the actual true colours were, but I wasn't wearing any sunglasses. Trying to get video of this amazing destination was hard because we constantly felt like we needed to adjust the settings to bring down the saturation, but it wasn't the settings of the camera, it was just what was actually right in front of us. Tobago Keys is located in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and it is part of the Tobago Keys Marine Park. It is home to a series of globally significant habitats including coral reefs, sea turtle nesting sites and feeding areas as well as small systems of mangroves. The only thing protecting this area is the horseshoe reef that surrounds the islands. That is the only form of protection between Tobago Keys and the northwest coast of Africa. I think that's pretty incredible. You are able to anchor on the windward side of the Keys because of the protection from the coral reef. It is still a little bit bumpy and the wind still howls that side, but it is worth it for the view. We took shelter behind Petit Batau because there was some swell and wind coming through. There was also a massive amount of yachts on the other side of the park. We picked up a beautiful and brand new mooring ball. We were told that they were three weeks old. We are guessing that this came into effect around the same time the fees went up over New Year's. We took the dinghy across to Baradell. It is known for its turtle sightings and it's cordoned off by boys around the south side of the island. Sadly, there is growing evidence that the ecosystem is being affected by non-sustainable use and natural environmental impacts. Significant sources of natural threats to corals are storm damage and white band disease, as well as bleaching. There are huge impacts associated with visiting yachts. Some of these impacts are anchor damage to seagrass and coral, as well as yachts running aground, snorkeling and diving, and bilge and water waste discharge from yachts. We noticed while we were in the park and snorkeling the lack of knowledge people have about the coral ecosystem. While we were snorkeling, we saw many people stand on the coral as well as touch it. There has been a recent uproar about the Tobago Keys Marine Park because of the increase of marine park fees. You used to be able to anchor for free and only pay per person, but now they charge you for anchoring too. There is no problem with charging to be in a marine park, especially one as beautiful as Tobago Keys, but maybe putting some money back into pamphlets that are given out to visiting yachts on how to protect the marine park and its ecosystem would help enlighten people about how to treat it.
This is where all the beach barbecues happen. $110 a person. And they do everything from fish, crayfish, lobster, um, conch, salads, everything you could possibly need. So good. We had the most amazing day today. I've still got my snorkeling mask imprint on my face. We swam with turtles and we just um, saw a nurse shark on the coral around the coral under the boat. It's just been a very productive day. <laughs> we couldn't have asked for better weather or better sightings really. It just, it's everything we wanted. And we're just so stoked. They're busy sneaking on the super yachts. Being very cheeky. Only two people sitting on the yacht. They're spying. No, <laughs> <laughs> the super yachts. We love researching. Put up the drone. You send the drone send over the there. Drone See what they're having for dinner. We got yeah. the scar of the the ATM. If you anchor or pick up a mooring ball on the northwest side of Petit Batal, you have that whole coastline to snorkel along. You can literally just jump in the water off the back of the boat and snorkel along there. That's what we did, but unfortunately our cameras were all dead from videoing throughout the day already, so we had to just enjoy it without catching any footage of it. It was really sad knowing that all three of our GoPros had given up on us right before Tobago Keys. So unfortunately we're using a very old camera with very little image stabilization. So please bear with us with our very shaky underwater video. We've got our rum from Wolfie that he bought us. He says it's Trinidad's most premium rum and we've saved it for a very special occasion. And that is being in Tobago Cays, one of our bucket list destinations in the Caribbean. So thank you Wolfie and cheers to you. Cheers Wolfie. It's an amazing rum. Oh, it's a smooth, smooth rum. Lovely. Thank you, Wolfie. At sunrise. <laughs> Whose dumb idea was this? <laughs> and we're getting ready to go. Where are we? What island is it? Oof. Petit Remue. Is it that or Bateau? 
One of the others. We'll put it here. Yeah. We're going to go watch the sunset off of it. First sunset we The fact that we are both referring to the sunrise as a sunset shows that we really don't use our brains first thing in the morning. I actually got up to look at it the whole time in the Caribbean. And watch it's it will be bad. like. That's not going to be impressive yeah, because there's so much cloud. So why not even see it? But we're awake, so we decided we're doing it. We made it for sunrise. <laughs> Look like eggs. <laughs> But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And look at the colour of that water behind us. The sun's not even up yet. I think we need some pancakes for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Put dad on that when we get back. <laughs> look at that view. My dad's just gone missing. He just gets up and goes. Disappeared for his quiet time. You'd swear it was like minus three degrees. <laughs> the misery level is real. <laughs> He's sad because he didn't get up early enough to have coffee. So now it's everyone else's fault. Out of nowhere the heavens opened and it started raining like crazy so Colvin's coffee was delayed for a little bit longer. Within minutes it was clear again but for Colvin it felt like a lifetime. Colvin tends to be extremely dramatic if he doesn't get his coffee as soon as he opens his eyes. After we had been watered and fed, we headed back out to Baradell for a snorkel. This time my dad came with because we had told him all about the turtles we had seen the day before. And of course, as our luck has it, when he gets in the water, there were no turtles around. We also found that it was extremely murky and the sediment was just flying all over the place in the water and it just wasn't as good when we snorkeled in the morning as we did from lunchtime to the afternoon. We found that the turtles at Tobago Cays were extremely friendly and very unperturbed about you being there. The bigger turtles were way more relaxed than the smaller turtles and you could get really really close up to them. We tried our hardest not to touch them, we never did, besides for the camera pole occasionally touching their fins as they swam past us but they are just incredible to be able to dive down and watch for as long as you can hold your breath. They are just, I don't know, there is something about it that just made it so incredibly special.
Faradil is where you want to be if you want to swim with the turtles. They have it cordoned off by boys because it is a turtle sanctuary and they say it is safe to swim inside of the boys. Unlike plants, corals do not make their own food. Corals are in fact animals. The branch or mound that we often call a coral is actually made up of thousands of tiny little animals called polyps. Coral reefs are happening places, even though they only take up as little as 1% of the ocean. Around 25% of all marine life calls it home. More than 4,000 different kinds of fish depend on coral reefs. While thousands of fish rely on coral for food, millions of people depend on those fish for their next meal. Scientists estimate that over 500 million people eat fish caught from coral reefs. That's a lot of fish and a lot of people. Baby, you Coral reefs can be really, really old. While corals are animals, they have been around for a long time and they have extremely long lifespans. There's evidence of coral reefs being in existence for more than 240 million years. And if you visit a coral reef today, it may be up to 10,000 years old. If you have spent any time in or near coral reefs, you have likely noticed the water is clean and very rarely murky. This fact is because corals and animals they host, like sponges, rely on particles floating in the ocean for food. As a result, the water around the reef is usually very clear. Coral is one of the slowest growing species on the planet. This is likely one of the reasons they live so long. In fact, coral might only grow 0.2 inches a year. Colbin has gone snorkeling all on his own. All of us. 
are extremely tired and freezing cold from snorkeling out on the reef. The colour of the water here is just insane. It just feels unreal when you look at that. We had spent three days in Tobago Cays and almost our entire time in the water. It was really, really hard to get out of the water and at some stages, while I was snorkeling against the current, I thought to myself, is this how I'm going to die? Because I was so exhausted, but getting out of the water is so difficult because there's just so much to see. My free diving skills left a lot to be desired and I could barely hold my breath for 30 seconds. Whereas Colbin has been practicing for this moment since leaving South Africa and did regular breath holds or whatever you would call it in preparation. So he was really well trained and could stay down under the water for a really long time. Sometimes this even caught the turtle's attention and made them swim towards him. The turtles can be really inquisitive, especially if you're not moving too quickly. Colbin was able to swim with them for a really long time. This is a true speed of how slowly they were swimming together. The turtles really are so chilled. This was probably one of the biggest turtles we saw in Tobago Keys. He was humongous and quite deep in the water so I couldn't get very close to him, but he had a lot of scars on his shell.
three beautiful days, we are letting go of our mooring ball and heading across to Mayo. really upset about me <laughs> oh gosh this was just the best if you enjoyed our video please give it a like and if you haven't already and want to be notified about our next videos please hit subscribe and the notification bell We have to say a huge thank you to our patrons and members it feels like each week we're getting someone new so it's very special to us and hopefully soon soon we will be able to save up enough to buy a brand new underwater camera and hopefully do Tobago Keys again because it's just so worth it with a really good quality camera so thank you guys for making that a possibility in the very near future Thank you.